Five stocks to watch in 2020. That's what we're talking about here today, guys. I am going to tell you guys about the five stocks that I think are the most interesting stocks to watch in 2020. And I thought this might be an appropriate video to do here today, being that we're just a little over a month into 2020. And uh, so three of these stocks I actually own. Three of these five stocks I own. Two of these stocks I do not own, but I am super interested in seeing all five of these stocks, how they play out throughout the year. Because some of these stocks have some very very big things going on in their business models right now that are changing the revenues and the profits for these companies in a massive, massive way. And for that reason, I think these five companies are super, super intriguing. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and let me know in the comment section what five stocks you guys will be watching in 2020. By the way, I just want to let you guys know we're going to have a huge Valentine's sale on Becoming Master of Stock Market course. That will be a pinned comment down there in terms of if you want to get on the email list, we'll shoot you an email as soon as that deal drops on Valentine's Day, all right? All right, guys, let's start getting into this. So the first stock of the five that I'm super interested to watch in 2020 and see how this one plays out is AMD stock. This is not a stock I personally have a position in, but I think it is super intriguing. So as of right now, AMD is almost a $54 stock. If you don't know, AMD is known for, you know, basically being a CPU and GPU company at the end of the day. And if you've been tracking the stock for any amount of time, you know this stock has been absolutely bananas, okay? I mean, in my 10 plus years of being in the stock market, I, I don't know if I can name another stock that's had this ridiculous of a four-year performance. Like, look at the four-year chart, or you can pull up a five-year chart on AMD, and just look at the past four years. Since 2016, it's absolutely ridiculous, guys. This was a $2 stock you could have picked up in 2016, okay? $2. I wish I really could wrap my head around this business model back then because my goodness, guys, it is absolutely ridiculous. Well, you would have had to wrap your head around the business model and you would have had to have a lot of faith at that time because AMD at that time was thought about as a joke company. Just, it just you know, just trash, okay? Whether it's talking about from a Wall Street perspective, customer perspective, AMD was not respected at that particular time. That's why it was a $2 stock and the stock is over 25 x I mean, it's been absolutely ridiculous, okay? Now, I think this was going to be really interesting to watch in 2020. Why? Because this is supposed to be a major, major growth year for the company. I mean, you look at the March quarter, they expect to have revenue growth of over 41%. And in terms of current year, they're expected to have around 30% revenue growth. Okay. So very strong revenue growth year expected for AMD. I think that's going to be very interesting to see where those numbers kind of shake out at. Okay. But the even bigger thing in my personal opinion to pay attention to is around earnings per share, because this is basically a company that just earns you know 64 cents you know that's a year ago eps and by 2021 they're expected to do $1.58 there so that's a huge a massive step up in eps there from 64 cents to $1.58 in, in literally a two-year span and why is this well amd has become a serious competitor to intel now like, like, like this is serious now like this is no longer a joke uh for, for a long time amd stock was looked upon as like like literally just a joke like you couldn't even compare them to intel you couldn't put them in the same sentence. It was like Intel was here, AMD was down there, and, and things have really switched up over the past few years. And now these, these two companies are actually in a real serious fight here for market share, for customers, for dollars, for profits, all these things. It has gotten really serious between these two companies. And I think this is this is uh, super intriguing to see how this plays out. And a lot of people that are very knowledgeable in the tech field, a lot more knowledgeable than me, um, have a lot of great things to say about AMD and, and you know the product that AMD is putting out, a lot of them that all they do every day is just look into tech items and, and, and you know study these sorts of things, a lot of them are amazed by AMD's products. And I think that is super intriguing. And that's why this is one of those stocks I think is going to be very important to watch in 2020. Now, this is a company that if you're looking short term, you know, the trailing P seems ridiculous, right? Almost 180 trailing P, that's ridiculously high. But forward P on this one is around 34. And so if we start talking about, you know, PEs maybe in the 30s or 40s, or something like that, some of the more value investors might start getting more interested in AMD, and especially if they can get to a profitability level where maybe that, that Ford P drops into the 20s for the following year. Then all of a sudden, some of the value investors start stepping in and be interested in this, where it goes from just growth investors and just maybe come, you know folks that saw you know the vision for AMD's turnaround here to maybe some folks that are value investors that are like, hey, this actually seems like a good value with good growth in front of it, okay? Now, they're coming for Intel, obviously, and if you look at Intel, 
Intel. I mean, this is a company that has a market cap of nearly $300 billion, okay? Nearly $300 billion, and AMD's market cap is $63 billion. So, I mean, a lot of people are thinking about what, it, what if they could just be half? What if they could just be a half of Intel, okay? That's still a double up in stock price from here. Or what if they could really become a massive company like an Intel, and this is a $250 or $300 billion market cap. So, a lot of people are thinking, you know, if they can become that, or, or you know, over the, let's say, in the next three to five years, then, then there's still a ton for the stock price to rise. Now, we're going to have to see how this shakes out. That's why I think it's a really important stock to watch this year. And in terms of the CEO, Lisa Su there, I think she deserves all the credit in the world because, like I said, you know, you go back four or five years ago, this, this stock was a joke. It, it was a joke of a company. And, uh, you know, almost everybody would say that out there. And, I mean, she's just turned around in a massive, massive way. And, and I think if you're talking about female CEOs, um, she's got to be at the top of the list, if not the best in the world, the most respected in the world right now. Uh, because what they have been able to do there at AMD over the past several years and turning around that company, putting them actually in a serious competitive threat to Intel now is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. So that is the first stock of these five stocks that I think are going to be important to watch in 2020. Let's get into stock number two. Now, in terms of stock number two, this is actually a stock I personally own. Okay. I got about three, uh, probably a little over 3,000 shares of this stock here. And it's good old Uber Booba stock. Okay. Ticker symbol on this one is Uber. You guys know Uber. You know Uber Eats. I don't need to really explain the business model to you guys. Uh, $41 stock is what this stock price is. And you guys, if you've been tracking the stock at all, I mean, it was rough. It was rough before the IPO. IPO comes out, you know, stock does okay at first, and then it just starts going down and down and down and down into the lockup expiration where the stock ends up bottoming out at like $25, $26 a share. I end up buying super heavy, you know, from basically, you know, some part of October throughout December, I was buying the stock super heavy, taking advantage of all those great deals. And I'm certainly happy I, you know, was able to take advantage of those deals. And in terms of Uber, I see something very important going on with Uber's business model right now. And not, a, not enough people are paying attention to this. I think Wall Street's starting to catch up, but uh, there, there's a dramatic change going on with Uber right now, okay? There's a company that in 2019 lost a ridiculous amount of money, okay? $6.81 a share. It was, it was, you know, disgusting losses for many various reasons. You know, Uber Eats lost them a ton of money. The IPO lost them a ton of money. Stock-based compensation. There was just a ton of moving parts that, that led to this ridiculous loss number for Uber in 2019. And that led a lot of people to be turned off of Uber because the loss was so insane when they went IPO. But what is going on right now is this company is going to get much, much closer to profitability in literally like a snap of a finger. So you go from a $6.81 ridiculous loss in 2019 to 2020, they're expected to lose, at least as far as analysts are on, on average, are expecting the company to lose about $2.02. I think the company is going to lose less than $2 a share, in my personal opinion, in 2020. So I think analysts are actually a little more negative than, than I am on this one, okay? So this is why this is really intriguing, because even if they just did a $2.02 .02 loss, that's a ridiculous, massive increase to the ability for this company to get closer to profitability, okay? Then you go ahead and look at 2021. Analysts on average have the company losing $1.26 on the bottom line. Some analysts out there have the company losing $0.56 cents a share. I think the company will be, uh, I think I have a good shot in 2021 to actually be right around break even or make a slight EPS. I think the way this business is fundamentally changing right now from a pricing standpoint, competitive pressure standpoint is dramatically better for this company's profitability. And for that reason, this company, in my opinion, is going to get to profitability way sooner than a lot of folks anticipate. And you get a story here with Uber where it was like, wait a minute, wasn't that that company that was losing massive amounts of money that was like this big thing over here, but they, they were like, you know, just throwing away money. They were just burning it over here. And wait a minute, now they're, they're starting to make profits. And, and oh my gosh, the profits are really going to start rolling in. When you get the, those type of stories you know, on Wall Street, it's very important to a stock price, okay? Now, in terms of, of revenue growth, I think this is also going to be very important to pay attention to in 2020. Because keep in mind, this is a company that is expected in the, in the upcoming quarter to have about 33% revenue growth. And then the June quarter, 37% revenue growth 
growth. But for current year, the, the total year of 2020, only about 28.5%, which I don't want to say only like it's a, like it's a low number or something. That's really a, still a very strong number. But needless to say, Wall Street's expecting the back half of the year to be very weak for Uber. I'm not so sure it's going to be that weak for Uber. I think it can be decently strong even the back half of the year. So I think actually the revenue number for 2020 in general might actually be a little low from analysts out there and they might end up you know, posting a number like 30% plus revenue growth for the company in 2020. Okay. Now, it's not just me that is expecting this company to get much, much closer to profitability in the very short term. Uber CEO looks to put 50 cents of every dollar of revenue growth into achieving profitability, okay? And these Uber stock earnings just came out literally last week. And Dara also said the company can get EBITDA profitable by Q4 of 2020. Now that's EBITDA profitable, so that's not really like the most real form of profitability. But needless to say, even on an EBITDA basis, to get profitable for the company in, 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 at some point in 2020 is a dramatic a dramatic difference for this company when you go from a company that was peak losses in 2019 to even on an EBITDA you know, basis, could they get profitable? It's a huge change. It's a huge change for Uber stock price. And when you get these types of changes, it means so much to a stock price, okay? I mean, I mean, you know, there's this other company, I'm, I'm a slight investor in, and their name is uh, good old Tesla Maestro, okay? And I'm by no means saying this is gonna happen to Uber stock, okay? Uh, or, or anything like that. But you look at Tesla, Tesla stock hardly moved for almost five years. The stock was, you know, it bounced around from $200 to $350 and it went up and it went down and it basically went nowhere for five years years. For five years, Tesla stock basically went nowhere. And then everything changed, you know, a few quarters ago, and you get this ridiculous change in the stock price where it just shoots absolutely to the moon, okay? And why is this? Well, Tesla, all this whole time, over these past several years, they were growing production. They were growing the amount of cars. They were doing some amazing things tech-wise. They were expanding their lead against competitors. They were doing all these things, and Wall Street never cared. Wall Street didn't care what was going on. It wasn't until these, you know, insane losses Tesla was taking, all of a sudden started going into profits and Tesla also started reporting some quarters recently that were profitable quarters. And now Wall Street's expecting Tesla to be profitable in 2020 and very handsomely profitable in 2021. This is what changed everything for Tesla's stock price because everything Tesla had, you know, Tesla came out with the Model 3 Tesla went into production of the Model 3. Tesla was expanding around the world, gigafactories, all these sorts of things. And literally, Wall Street didn't care. It wasn't until all of a sudden the company went from taking unbelievably huge losses to, oh, we're going to start making profits, that all of a sudden the stock has shot to the moon now. So not saying that's going to happen to Uber stock. I'm just saying when you get those type of opportunities in the stock market where huge losses turn into you know potentially huge profits, when you get that and the, the, the you know Wall Street starts looking and starts respecting, that's when you start getting the stock price to move up in a massive, massive way. So needless to say, uh, I'm very happy with my Uber position. I think it's a very important one to watch in 2020. Regardless whether you own that stock or you're just sitting on the sidelines, and keep in mind, I keep track of about 100 stocks that I watch all the time. So even if I don't own a position, I'll still watch a ton of stocks out there because I might end up opening up a position in that stock down the road if I get the right opportunity, okay? Stock number three up here is good old Skyworks Solutions. I don't have a, a nickname for Skyworks Solutions yet. Maybe Sky E2 High E? I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I don't know. I'll think of something for Skyworks Solutions. Let me know if you guys have a nickname for Skyworks Solutions in that comment section, okay? Uh, ticker symbol on this one is SWKS. It's $119 stock. This is another one of those stocks I have a position in. Uh, and the stock number four, I do not have a position in that we'll be getting into in just a moment. Uh, but in terms of Skyworks, solutions this is a 5g play so if you didn't know 5g it, it, you know basically is going to start taking off in 2020 and 2021 and 2022 are going to be the massive years for 5g rollout but needless to say 2020 is going to be the year you know all these devices start getting rolled out in a real way we saw a few 5g devices start to come to market in 2019 but it was such a minuscule amount that doesn't even really add up for skyworks numbers but in terms of you know, smartphones, there's gonna be a lot of 5G smartphones, you know, pretty much coming out in 2020. And a lot of other connected devices 
starting to come out in 2020, 2021, and 2022 will be huge years for the 5G ramp up. But uh, needless to say, I think the thing that's going to really kick 5G off in a real way is going to be when the iPhone launches, a 5G iPhone, which should be coming, at least as far as shown off, should be shown off at some point this fall, in the fall of 2020. So, you know, think about, you know, seven, eight months from now, the, that a 5G iPhone should be shown off, and then we'll see when that comes in the market. But likely Skyworks will be a huge supplier of that iPhone for a lot of the 5G, you know, related components that go inside for connectivity. And uh, so 5G should be, a, you know, a massive growth vector for Skyworks solutions. Basically, 5G phones are going to be much more complicated to make, and the chips inside, especially 5G related chips, are going to be much more expensive. So this is why this is a huge thing for Skyworks, because they'll likely be able to charge more. And so think about it, if you had, let's say, $15 of content in your semiconductor manufacturer in the past, maybe with 5G, if you have 5G components, you can get that up to a $20 number, $25 number, or something like that, okay? Now, this is a, this is a company that I think analysts have numbers too low, and this is why I think it's going to be a really important stock to watch, not just from 5G, but just from the financials perspective. Year ago, EPS for this company was about $6.17. Analysts have the company earning basically $6.59. I think that number I think that number is too low. I think they're going to come in with a better number than that. We're seeing some good strength in smartphones as it is. And then when you add on, you know, all these 5G, you know, basically phones that will start coming out in 2020, I think this is going to be a huge growth factor. And keep in mind, uh, Skyworks is also playing a little role in the infrastructure build out of 5G over time. So I think that number might end up being a little low, might end up being closer to $7 of EPS, in my personal opinion, they end up doing in 2020. Okay. In terms of 2021, then they're expected to do $7.76. So it's clear as day analysts are expecting, you know, 2021 to be really be the major growth year for Skyworks, you know, and beyond. And this is a dividend stock, very low payout ratio. And as this company increases profitability quite dramatically over future years, I'm looking for, you know, this dividend to also increase along with the stock price to go up a lot. Okay. Um, if you haven't done a lot of study on 5G, I definitely suggest you do it. It's definitely a game changer, you know, across, you know, whether you're talking about gaming, whether you're talking about new technology, virtual reality, things like that, whether you're talking about streaming, you can stream, you know, 4K, maybe even 8K video on, on your phone, you know, in a matter of a, a couple seconds, it pulls up, or maybe even less than a second, it's just boom, you click on it and, and it pulls up, okay? Uh, whether you're talking about health-related things, data storage, smart cities, uh, whether you're talking about self-driving cars, it's a game changer. 5G is absolutely a game changer, and if you want, you know, things to work much, much faster, you really need 5G in the end, okay? And this is a, it's an important company, I think, to watch because they have huge growth in front of them over the future years as long as they execute, and the 4P on the stock's 15. In this type of market, a 4P of 15 is very low. Never mind when you're going to be one of the, in my opinion, one of the top five plays when it comes to 5G technology out there in the public markets. I think that valuation, um, even here, even though the stocks ran a lot recently, I think it's still very, very compelling if you think about the next few years, guys. Uh, so that was the third stock I think is an important stock to watch in 2020 and see how things kind of play out there. Uh, in terms of stock number four, this is not a stock I personally have a position in, uh, but this company is named Micron Technology. Ticker symbol on this one is MU. It's about a $57 stock. And if you do not know, Micron is one of the biggest players in the world when it comes to DRAM and NAND memory. So think of them as a memory chip supplier. They're one of the biggest in the world in terms of DRAM. There are like, you know, two other major competitors. On the NAND side, I believe there's about five other serious competitors out there. And, and you know, everybody is way behind them uh, in terms of, you know, the, the types of market share and whatnot. Those are kind of the main competitors they have there, okay? Now, in terms of Micron, this stock's been absolutely absolutely nuts. I mean, you look at this stock in basically early 2016, you could pick up these shares for 10 bucks. Okay. 10 bucks. This stock was down and out. It was nothing but negativity. And then this stock went on a historic run to nearly, you know, basically over $60 a share. It went over 6X in a matter of about two years or so. Okay. It was absolutely incredible. The run the stock went on. And then after that crazy run, the stock just shoots down and down and down and down until it was actually a little under under $30 a share going into 2019. And since that time, it has, you know, definitely come back quite strong. Now it's about $57. Okay. Now in my private stock group, we have, uh, we probably have well over 50 members now of the uh, six figure club. And one of the gentlemen that's in the six figure club hall of fame, we call him hoggy doggy. Okay. 
His biggest position is, is actually Micron. And so this guy, he's got hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in the stock. And so this is a stock he pays attention to obviously more than any other. And so he pays attention to memory prices like religiously, like religiously, like always watching what's going on with DRAM pricing and whatnot, and as well as NAND pricing, which NAND isn't quite as important to Micron's business model, but it's still very important. And uh, what he's been telling me is basically, pricing has basically went up in a straight line almost for the past several months. He's like pretty much every day I look at pricing, it is up and it is up and it is up. And if you look at that chart of the DXI, it basically shows that he is correct. I mean, if you look at this, basically since like November time, it's just kind of like up in a straight line when it comes to DRAM spot pricing. Now, keep in mind, if your memory chip supplier usually do contracts, so you know if a pricing increases quite dramatically, usually you're looking um, out a quarter or two before that pricing is reflected in your numbers. So it's not like something that's just reflected in a snap of fingers or something. Usually this takes a quarter or two to kind of you know change contract pricing and whatnot. Uh, but needless to say, that's a really positive thing. If DRAM pricing continues to increase like this, this is a super you know important thing for for Micron's profitability because if DRAM pricing is really bad, this a company that loses money or, or makes very small profits. But when DRAM pricing is very high, this is a type of company that just like, you know, just uh, eats up the cash. Like it's absolutely insane how much money they make uh, when DRAM pricing is very strong. So where this one's going to get really interesting, why I think this is an important stock to watch in 2020, is this stock's in a position where they might be able to blow out numbers here. It's all going to depend on if, if the DRAM pricing continues to show strength, they're going to end up absolutely destroying destroying numbers this year, but we'll have to see what happens with DRAM price and that's why it's a stock to watch, right? So basically there's a company that did $6.35 of EPS year ago, but $2.30 expected this year, which means you know profitability is expected to go down in a dramatically bad way, okay? A, a huge decrease year over year. But if DRAM pricing continues to increase, uh, the back half of the year for Micron could end up being incredibly strong and they end up blowing out numbers in the back half of the year and that $2.30 maybe end up, ends up going to like $3 or $4, depending on what happens with DRAM pricing. And if 5G excitement starts to build in a real way, then that could also be be a growth vector for not just you know folks needing more and more memory, but also DRAM pricing and NAND pricing continue to increase. So this should be a very interesting year for Micron stock and as far as the profitability. And as far as 2021, folks out there expecting, you know, analysts on average are expecting about $5.51 of EPS, but there are also some analysts that have that $10, okay, $10 EPS. That's a dramatic difference there. Uh, I mean, if pricing continues to be, remain strong, they should get up to at least the number they did a year ago, the 635 number, if not bigger than that. And it's not just EPS, which I think is important to look at. You look at the revenue. Analysts on average have this company's revenue going down 12.4% in 2020. And this is another number that they, you know, Micron could end up blowing out of because basically uh, like, like more and more memories need it, like more and more NANDs need it, more and more DRAMs need it. And then if pricing continues to increase and increase, those contracts in the back half of the year are going to be very intriguing from Micron's perspective. So that's another number, you know, everybody's expecting this company to have a double digit, you know, revenue down year. If this pricing keeps going the way it's going, uh, they might end up actually growing, not just not shrinking, you know, double digits, they might end up growing. Uh, so this is this is super intriguing. Now, in terms of, of MU stock, this is not a stock that's heavily shorted. So if you think this is one of those stocks you're gonna get some massive short squeeze in or something like that, you're, you're not gonna get it in this one. You'd likely just get fundamental investors that would continue to buy in if they show really strong strength and, and kind of DRAM pricing and whatnot. There's only 2.5% of the float actually short out there. And so this will definitely be a fun one for for me to keep my eye on in 2020. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of MU stock. Is that one you've ever owned or looked into in the past, okay? In terms of stock number five, oh gosh, I wonder, I just wonder what this stock number five could be that I think is important to watch. Oh, it's good old Tesla, my Tesla stock. Now I could go into you know 20, 30 minutes talking about Tesla stock, but there's a video that didn't really get pushed. And I'm not sure why, maybe it's because of the thumbnail I used. I usually use my face in it. Uh, and maybe because I didn't use my face in it. Maybe that's why the video didn't do well. I have no clue why this video didn't get seen by more people. It only got like 38,000 views and that's really bad for a Tesla video on the main channel, uh, especially when it's been out for, I don't know, over a month 
month now. But if you want to hear my opinion around Tesla stock, type in my prediction for Tesla stock in 2020 into YouTube. And this will be the first video that comes up. Not many people ended up watching that video. And that video goes right into detail on what I'm expecting for Tesla stock in 2020 and uh, why I'm going to watch this stock. Obviously, I'm a big shareholder of Tesla. I think I have like 300 shares. So it's definitely stock I will be watching heavily in 2020 and for years beyond. But uh, definitely check out that video there that goes into detail on that. Uh, I thought rather than saying the same stuff I said in that video, you could just go watch that. And so I hope you guys enjoy that video. Well, like, like I said, I'm not sure why I didn't get pushed more. Maybe I just, I should have used my face in the thumbnail. I have no clue, but it is what it is, guys. So those are the five stocks I'm going to be watching the most heavy in 2020. And if you said that I could only watch five stocks for this entire year, those are five stocks that I think are super intriguing out there, guys. Let me know in the comment section what stocks you guys are going to be paying attention to in 2020. Don't forget, we got a huge Valentine's Day sale coming up on the Becoming Master of the Stock Market course. So uh, if you want to get on the email list to, for us to shoot you an email as soon as that deal drops, Valentine's Day, go ahead and check out the pinned comment down there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.